Hello and welcome to this end-to-end -end walkthrough of creating, running and managing an API using IBM API Connect. This walkthrough focuses on a fictional company named Connected Cars, who have a pre-existing database of sports cars which they use to sell directly to customers. Connected Cars want to take advantage of the API economy and give other companies access to their database of cars so they can expand their sales channels. Connected Cars don't want to limit their reach to just their host country, which is in English. They want to sell internationally, so have decided to use IBM's Watson Translate API so the description of the cars for sale can be translated into different languages, and this service offered via the API. So this walkthrough is in two parts. The first goes through the steps to create and run the new API in IBM API Connect, and then the second part focuses on an external company who want to use the Connected Cars API and build it into a mobile app which they are planning on launching. So let's get started on building our new API for Connected Cars. The first thing we're going to do on the command line we're going to run the APIC loopback command to create our new API Connect project. We're going to call the application Cars Demo. We'll keep the default directory. And then the type of application we'll choose is Empty Server, which is an empty loopback API with no pre configuration um, or examples. So the API Connect Toolkit now creates the project scaffolding and downloads the um, npm dependencies by running an npm install command and as you can see the status, status bar updates us to the progress of that so now we'll change our directory um, to cars demo the one we just created and then we'll run the APIC edit command and this starts the UI for the API Connect toolkit. As you can see the Cars Demo API has been created for us. So the first thing we're going to do is create a model. We're going to call the model car. And it's going to be a persisted model, which means that this is associated with the database. And as I mentioned earlier, this will be the, the pre-existing Cloudant database um, of the cars that connected cars already have. Now let's go ahead and create some properties. So the first property we've created is called name, and it's required and it's a string. The second is description, which is also required and is a string. Thirdly, be the price which is required and is a number then image URL and this is because the data inside the Cloudant database has um, URLs pointed to, pointing to images of the cars for sale and the final one will be ID an ID is also required and we'll actually specify that this is an ID by checking the appropriate checkbox. So you'll notice that there's no data source configured inside our model and this is because we haven't yet created the data source to point to the pre-existing database in Cloudant. So the next thing we're going to do is to create that data source to point to the Cloudant database. So we'll click on data sources and then we'll click on add. We're going to call the new data source Cloudant Cars DB. Now, for the connector, we're going to select IBM Cloudant DB. And you'll notice that the API Connect Toolkit has requested us to run an npm install to install the loopback connector to Cloudant. We're going to copy that command, go back to our terminal, and then run it. And you can see that the npm install 
downloads the package and installs it in our project. So now let's point our data source to our cloud database. So I've got this, this information saved in my notepad. So the database is called WG Demo. I'll copy the URL, then the username. And then finally the password. And now we'll hit save. So now we've created a new data source pointing, pointing to the cloud and database. Let's go back into the model and specify that this model uses our new data source. And again, we'll click save. And that is our model fully defined. So now let's test it. So we went to the run tab on the top right. We've clicked to start our local server. And that's it now started. So now we will click on explore. And what you will see on the left hand side is all the operations created automatically for us by creating the car model. So you can see we've got operations to post, put, get, head and delete. So we're going to call the operation for get cars and we can see we get a 200 OK and we actually get the results returned back from the database. So we've got the names, descriptions and the prices of the three cars which are in the database. So as I mentioned earlier, we want to um, translate the description of our cars into other languages other than English. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new data source to point to the Watson Translate API on Bluemix. And we call this via REST. So for the connector type, we're going to select REST services. And again, we have to run an npm install to, to um, download the loopback connector for REST. So again, we'll copy the command that's given to us and run that on the command line. So now to point to the IBM Watson Translate endpoint. So we'll copy the URL. Now we'll copy the operations JSON string. And we'll set the CRUD parameter to false. And that's because this um, data source doesn't relate to um, CRUD operations. And then again, we'll click Save. So now what we have to do is create a model to associate our new data source to Watson Translate to. We're going to call the model Translation Utilities. We don't want this to be public because it's only for use internally and we'll set the data source to Watson Translate, the one that we just created. And finally, we have to set the base model as just model, and that's because this doesn't relate to a persisted model, just like the car model did previously. So now we have to add the logic to call the Watson Translate API when our um, API is called. So I've opened up my text editor, and I've went and I've opened up the project for cars demo and I've went to the cars.js file. And what I'm going to do is replace the code in here with code I've, I've um, already written. And what this will do is every time a call is made to get cars, the get cars operation, this will take the language from the query parameter set in, sent in as part of the URL. And if the language is um, a different language from English, it will then make a call to the Watson Translate API 
specifying the new language and the description and then it will return that description in place of the English description that comes back from the database. So now we're ready to publish our API. The first thing we have to do is by clicking on the publish link is to add a, a target which in this case will be Bluemix. So I'm already logged into Bluemix and I've selected my um, API C space inside my organization. And I'm going to type in a new application um, because we want to deploy this to Bluemix as a, as a new node application. I've called my application connected cars and I'll click save. So now we've set up a target, we actually have to push firstly our application and then we'll push our API itself. So we'll click publish application and we'll hit publish. So I can see the success message in the top left. So now let's go into Bluemix to check that the application is there and we can see it is connected cars and it's in the running state. So now we've pushed our application, there's one final thing that we have to do, and that is to update our gateway to point to the request URL of the node application we just deployed. So this is written to the, uh, the command line when we push the app, so I'll just copy that, and it will replace the invoke URL in our gateway with that URL. And because we also have to pass in a query to parameter for, to our node app, I'm going to update our invoke URL to make sure the language query parameter is passed into the node application. And we also have to update our TLS profile, which is also written to the command line when we push the node app. So the final thing we have to do is to change the gateway type to data power gateway so that we can deploy it to Bluemix. So now let's publish our product to Bluemix. So again we'll click on the publish, however this time we'll only select just to publish the products and not the application. We'll select card demos and then click publish. And you can see we've got the success message and we've now successfully published our product to Bluemix. Now, as an external developer, I'd like to create an app that gives me a list of the latest sports cars. I'd like this app to be available to people in different countries, so I'd like the app to be able to translate the language. I know the company Connected Cars produced a list of these, so I'm going to log in to their developer portal and Firstly, I need to register an application that is going to use the API that, that Connected Cars have. I do this by clicking on Register Application, and then I need to fill in the title and the description. Once this is done, I can click Submit, and then the, re the new application is registered. As you can see, this gives me a client ID and a client secret. I'll need both of these later on, so I'm just going to copy and paste them into a safe place. Firstly, the client secret and then I'll do the client ID. Both these are unique to me. I'll just get this one now. There we go. Next, I can view the APIs that are available. Cars demo, this sounds like the one that I'm going to want. So if I click on that, I can then see a list of all the APIs that are available down the left hand side. So get cars is the one that I'm going to want to use, so I'm going to subscribe to that and as I can see I've been given the default plan. If I click on that and I register the application that I would like it to be used by, it's my cars. I can go back into the car demo and go down to get cars. Here I can test out and check that it actually works. I'm going to need the client secret from earlier, so I'm just going to put it in there and call the operation. 
As you can see, as I've already subscribed, I get a 200 OK. And this gives me a list of the, this gives me all the cards that are available. The next step from the developer portal is to get the URL. I'm going to need this URL to be able to put it in the mobile app I've already created. So I'm just going to copy this again and paste this in a safe place. Now, the next step is to link the API and the mobile app that I've already created. I'll just go into my mobile app and go down to controllers.js. This app has been created in Ionic, so I'm just going to put in the URL from before so as the URL base in the app. I'm just going to copy this and paste it back in. There we go. Next, in the header, I'll need both the client ID and the client secret. So I'm just going to get these and copy them and paste them back in. There we go. Just copy that one and there we put paste it back in. Finally, I'd like to check this all works. So I'm just going to save the application and then I'm going to run it. This is done via Ionic Emulate iOS. iOS is an, uh, gives an iPhone that I'd like to simulate the app on. Now what this is doing here is this is going to build the application and I should get a message saying build successful. It should come in a minute. There we go, build succeeded. Next, it's going to launch an iPhone, an iPhone 6 Plus that I'd selected. And so you can see it's coming up on the right hand side. This is a simulator of the actual iPhone. Eventually, once it's loaded, my app should appear on here and I'll be able to test that the API call that I added in works correctly. There we go, it's just loading now. And as you can see, the API worked. All the name the name of the cars, the description and the picture are all in there. If I can scroll down, you can see that they've all been added in. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I want to be able to translate to different languages because I'd like people all around the world to view this app. So this is a function that Connected Cars did enable, so I'm just going to check that Italian and Spanish work as these are the ones that were set up. Yep, there you go, you can see it's translated into Italian. Next, I'll just check the Spanish one. And refresh, and there we go, this is translated into Spanish. So this is a basic application that calls an API from someone else's development portal. If you'd like any of this code, it's all available, and we'll put the links up here for you to see. Thank you.